In the final example, I will show you how you can use statistical API to create time series of variables such as NDVI derived from Sentinel-2 Level 2A imagery. This API enables you to derive st statistics from satellite images without having to access and download the pixels yourself. All the processing is done in the cloud. Based on your AOI, time range and time interval, the API will return your requested statistics in an easily readable JSON format. Similarly to Process API, there are some general rules when building eval scripts for st statistical API that you should account for. For instance, the default output value of, sub of the sample type is float32 rather than uint8. And the evaluate pixel function must always return a data mask in addition to the output deriving these statistics. We can see how this works in the eval scripts code block here where we are calculating NDVI, similar to the previous process API example. However, there's no visualization output here. This script only calculates the index and you can see that the outputs are also separated into the NDVI output and the data mask output. Next, we need to define our two fields of interest. This is one of the prerequisites of a st statistical API request. We define two fields here, as in the second example, I will show you how to plot a time series graph using matplotlib, where we compare with NDVI time series for both fields. Now that eval script and fields of interest have been defined, let's take a look at the rest of this st statistical API request. As well as the eval script and field of interest, we need to define some additional parameters. Firstly, the time interval, which defines the time range of our request. Secondly, the aggregation interval, that defines the length of time each interval is. In the case of this example, the time interval is 10 days. So the aggregation interval is defined as P10D. The minimum time interval you can use is one day. We've also included an additional argument in this request in which we set the maximum cloud cover coverage uh, data filter to 10%. This ensures only images that have 10% or lower cloud cover will be used in the time series we generate. Now let's run this cell, then we can examine the JSON response that is returned. As you can see, the results that are returned are not too easy to read to the human eye. However, they are very readable to a machine. In the next steps we're going to take, we will convert this JSON into a pandas data frame and then plot the data frame into a time series plot using matplotlib. In the following cells here, we've also defined some helper functions to help you achieve this conversion yourself in your own time. Running these cells, we can then return our data frame, which is an easy to read table before using the data frame to plot the NDVI time series using matplotlib. Of course, a single field is not that useful to look at in isolation. So let's take this another step further. In the second example, I will show you how you can plot both requests into one single plot and then compare the two responses over time and space. We can run the exact same request again, except this time the second field is used as an input. We can then repeat the previous steps, converting the JSON into a pandas data frame. And then finally, using this cell, we can plot both time series onto the same plot. The results of this show that the two fields have two very different NDVI responses. They both show an increase in NDVI in the early part of the growing season, but in mid-June, they deviate significantly, where it's clear that field one is either harvested or mowed. In comparison, the NDVI in the second field is still high for the rest of the growing season. This wraps up this tutorial, introducing the Sentinel Hub APIs in the Copernicus data space ecosystem. In summary, this notebook, in this notebook, I've shown you how you can quickly access satellite imagery using process API, and then visualize NDVI derived from Sentinel-2 Level 2A imagery.
I've also shown how you can make statistical API requests to produce NDBI time series for single and multiple fields. I hope that this tutorial has been useful to you all. For more information, I encourage you to check out the Sentinel Hub API documentation found at the Copernicus Dataspace ecosystem website. You will find the link in the description below. If you have any further questions, you can ask these in the Copernicus Dataspace ecosystem community forum or make a request at user support. Again, both are linked in the description. Thank you again for listening and stay tuned for future videos.